Welcome to Heat Check. This is the top 10 highest selling vintage denim items on eBay over the last two weeks. Let's dig in to the list. At number 10, we have this vintage 1960s Levi's. This is the 551Z hidden rivet uh, pair of jeans. This is essentially the uh, zipper version of the 501. Uh, later on, different versions would be like uh, that had zippers would be called uh, 502s or 505s, etc., etc. Uh, but this one looks great, a bit rough. Uh, love the um, the wallet wear there. Uh, the patch is partly uh, removed, uh, but it being on there in the first place is pretty cool. It has an offset um, uh, a belt loop here. Uh, maybe some repairs there at some point, uh, but still looks great. Beautiful pair right here. Um, all that light. Uh, thread that you would expect to see it's got the s and the uh, v stitch right here as well uh, super sweet pair there's the hidden rivets uh, so, yeah it looks like definitely a repair at some point uh, super sweet pair uh, this one did sell for nine hundred and at ninety nine dollars then we have the first appearance i believe of stifle uh, wabash children's overalls from like the very early 20th century, 1910, 20s, 30s, who really knows exactly in this case. They're hard to pinpoint. Uh, but this one looks super cool. Uh, we've got these uh, kids with the stripe, the pen stripes. This have some damage, but this is a, this is a historical piece, basically. Um, there is the Stifle logo printed on there. Stuff like this is hard to come by. Um, kids clothes, too, especially, because for the most part, kids clothes gets tossed aside. doesn't get used over and over again. Um, uh, or doesn't get used until it's worn out necessarily. Um, but really cool piece, rare to find, uh, hard, uh, hard to find piece stifle, obviously having a, uh, a kind of a moment over the last, uh, few years. Uh, this one is sold for $1,013 and 66 cents. Uh, then we have another cool non Levi's jacket here, though, of course, you can probably see some of the inspiration that they drew from. But we have the Montgomery Ward 101 40s buckle back jacket, uh, similar to the Type 2. Uh, the Type 2 obviously would have come out a bit later on this, but uh, uh, we have the pleats down, the pleated uh, around the button area and the two pockets, obviously lower than where uh, Levi's would have put their pockets. Uh, but it's still a really cool jacket, hard to come by, hard to find, cool buckle back. This one looks like it's in pretty good condition uh, all around. Uh, I don't know if it shows us, let's see, where the size is here. You can even see that. Yeah, so we're looking at like uh, a size 40, 41 on this in the chest here. Uh, really cool jacket for sure, hard to come by. This one it sold for $1,050. Then we have a 507 double X, the type two, uh, 1950s, but this one's interesting because it actually still has the jerky tag on the back. This is pretty hard to come by. You do not see this leather uh, patch on a lot of these. Um, this one uh, has some fraying around the collar and some other distressing too here around the, this one's pretty rough right here. I'll probably, it looks like it almost has some loss there. Um, uh, not just fraying per se, but still looks really pretty good for the most part. Um, it, you know, a type two is a type two. Oh, there's, yeah, there's some holes. So this one's got a lot of damage. Um, and so it's not surprising that it didn't go for, uh, nearly as much as, as some would find, uh, like, uh, some of the ones we've seen over the last few weeks. Um, but this one went for $1,200. Congratulations, buyer and seller. Cool, cool jacket. Next up, we have this 501 Biggie Hidden Rivets. Good size, 32 by 32, 40s, 50s. Uh, yeah, probably 50s, I'm going to say. I don't think it's quite 40s. Um, but it looks like it's in pretty good condition. Some light wear, obviously, but, you know, such as, you know, a, a pair of jeans from this era. There we have the uh, Selvage watch pocket. Uh, we have the Hidden Rivets and V-Stitch and stuff like we would expect. Uh, let's go down the line here. There, look, this is pretty cool right here. You, you can see this is actually, these are like match strike, um, where, where somebody, uh, would strike a matches on their jeans. That is a pretty cool little, a uh, little effect here. Uh, we have the, um, single sided 
uh, red tab. So this is probably uh, late 40s, early 50s. Uh, single stitch, obviously, that, that, that goes kind of without saying. There's some damage down here, which is kind of sad, but you probably can repair that pretty easily without it uh, compromising the garment too much. This one sold for $1,400. All right, then we have this Type 2. I'm a little bit suspicious on this sale. Um, it did appear to go through, but I'm going to uh, just add of my suspicions. Uh, this is a very deep color type 2 uh, with the patch still intact. Uh, 507 double X size 34, which is obviously a small size. I understand that. Uh, but this looks so deep, dark blue. This is a pretty impressive condition. Uh, yeah, we see that. We see that. So I'm a little bit suspicious off obviously the uh, flying apple vintage here only has one review uh, so that is also suspicious but one thing that makes me suspicious is, this, is that this jacket only went for sixteen hundred dollars um, which is not super crazy low but for something uh, for a jacket with this uh, color and condition it is a little bit surprising uh, so a little bit of a suspicious suspicion on this one but it does appear that it did go through and uh, it is a beautiful jacket, that is for sure. So if you want to get on this list, you better bring some dead stock Levi's because that tends to be what really makes it high on this list. We have this late 70s dead stock 501 salvage red line. Uh, this is just incredible. Great, uh, good size, 32 by 29. Uh, obviously dead stock pair of 501s. This looks like it has some writing on the inside. Maybe this was uh, what the store did after they uh, didn't sell it or something like that. But all the effects that we would see on a pair of jeans from that late 70s um, era looks like double stitch. So we're, so we're thinking after 1978. They don't show us the back side of this label or this tag so hard to say exactly which uh it is but it's definitely after 78 and before 84 so um yeah these jeans will go for a lot of money and this one certainly did it went for 2400 dollars again dead stock is gonna get you high on this list pretty much no matter what speaking of dead stock we have some more dead stock here uh, we have the uh, probably roughly from the same era. Let's take a look. We've got a six, so we're looking at probably the 70s, obviously at least. But it's the 66 model. Um, yeah, we're we're looking at the around the same time, a 40 by 30, which is not the best size to be honest, obviously, but uh, a bigger size. It doesn't see. I don't see if it shows us whether or not it had a single stitch on the back, which. I'm guessing since they don't show us, they don't, but let, well, wait, hold on. No, nope, we got single stitch right there on the back side. You can actually see the single stitch. So this is this is previous uh, to 78 or so. Uh, let's see if it says, no, I don't know if they say, actually say that. But anyway, beautiful pair of jeans. Uh, again, dead stock will get you high on this list. Uh, it being single stitch probably actually uh, contributes to the fact that these went, uh, even though they're not a better size, went for uh, more than the, the previous ones. These went for $2,600. All right, then we have the only type one on this list, which is actually kind of strange. So a lot of times we have multiple type ones, but here we only have one. Uh, pictures are okay. I wish some of these other pictures, are like this picture right here is kind of wacky to have, but we have the type one beautiful blue jacket. I mean, this is uh, fantastic. Uh, and then you got the buckle back. Everything's intact. This is incredible. Uh, this is an even better condition than the ones that I have previously uh, shown on this channel. Uh, so beautiful Type 1 denim jacket and actually looks like they got a pretty good deal out of this one. Uh, they took a best offer of $3,000. Uh, definitely a good value for the buyer. And I mean, anytime you make $3,000. Uh, probably also, I did notice that the seller has no feedback. So Maybe they just took what they can get, and, or maybe there's some suspicion on this one. But as far as I can tell, it does appear to have gone through and been paid for. All right, at number one, we have this one. This one's really cool. We don't see this very often. You might be shocked to see a, a toddler pair on this list. But uh, the Age Zero uh, vintage Levi's are incredibly hard to come by. 
and definitely a collector's item here. We have the 503Z double X with tags. I mean, it looks like everything is in good condition here. Uh, these are rare or then rare, uh, particularly in this condition, obviously. It's got the selvage. Super cool collector's piece. I don't know, maybe they'll put their kids in it. It's got, it does have a snap button as most uh, Levi's, um, most Levi's uh, kid stuff would have had at the time. Um, has the hidden rivets. It's super cool to find a piece like this and in dead stock condition, obviously. Uh, just, just a almost museum level piece here. So super cool pair of toddlers Levi's. So, it doesn't seem like the toddlers Levi's will make the list very often, but this this case they certainly did, and they topped the list at four thousand three hundred and sixty-six dollars with twenty-one bids. Super cool pair of jeans here. So that was the top ten heat check this week on this slightly abridged version. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.